do you prefer to paint in ZBrush as opposed to Substance Painter? I, I, like I said, I usually do a color fill. I like to keep objects separate, so when I'm doing my material IDs, I can just fill little separate objects in my scene with a full color, and then in Painter, it kind of depends on what I'm making. If I'm doing like creature stuff, let me show you that real quick. So for example, if I go in here, so for example, uh, in my YouTube series, uh, if you go to Intro to ZBrush Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, you might have seen this reptile here that I did. Uh, so if I'm doing like creature type stuff, I love poly painting my creature stuff. And I'm trying to think. So one thing you can do with materials, I'm glad this happened. You can go in here to Z Plugin and you can go into Subtool Master. And under here, you can go to Fill. Now, this thing is like turning color eyes off, turning color eyes on. Again, you can just hold down Shift and do that. It's not a big deal. You can also go in here and fill it with a color or a material or a color and material and it'll fill every single one of your subtools with whatever you have selected. So I'm going to fill this um, skin shader material on every single one of these. There we go. So now I can go into my skin shader material properties and I'm going to see if I can get this to show up a little bit better for you guys. And modifiers. Yeah, let's crank that diffuse up. So here's that creature and then in here I just went through and you can mask by cavity. So if I alt tap this one, turn off shift and let's go back to our starter material. You can go through here and in their masking, you can go through here and you can say, you can mask by features. You can also go down here and say mask by cavity. Uh, if you hit mask by cavity, it'll go through and evaluate your mesh. So now you can see it masked all the little indented parts. Of course, you can change this cavity profile to give you more or less of that effect. So if you control drag to unmask and then mask by cavity again, you can do that. Also, remember when we were doing the um, pistol with the... Uh, it was like the pistol on the plane, and then we were masking by color intensity, and then we were doing a mask adjust. You can do that as well. So you can take that blur down, change your mask adjust profile. We'll change this focal shift. Hit adjust, and you can adjust your mask based on that. So you can go through here, and you can knock down, or you can add, or you can subtract. Uh, let's let's see if we can hit reset. We can get it to do something here. Yeah, you're not really getting to do much, but. You can adjust after you've done your mask, you can adjust that using this um, mask adjust here. Uh, with this, you can now go through here. And if you, when I'm poly painting with masking, what I'll do is I'll turn off view mask. It's still there, so you gotta be careful that you know you don't click off and then forget that that's on and go on here and start trying to like sculpt on it. And it's like, why is it doing sculpting like that? That's bizarre. And it's like, oh yeah, I have my mask turned on. So you gotta turn your view mask back on. But if you want to, you can go through here. We can turn colorize back on. And now we've got this colorized thing. So you can see I colored in between to like fill this with like a dirt color here. And then I can go through here and I can like start painting in my cavities. Let's turn off, so yeah, let's turn on RGB. Start painting here and I'll start, leave my cavities alone or I can control tap. And you know what, let's go back to our standard brush, turn on RGB, we'll drop our RGB intensity down and I'll go through here. You can, again, you can sample, you can either drag off from the color and sample or you can just hover over and click. So if I want to lighten those cracks up a little bit, um, if I control tap, it'll invert the mask, but it turns visibility back on. So I'm going to turn that off again. Wait, yeah, turn that off again. And now when I start painting in here, I can go in here and I can lighten up where the cracks are. So I can kind of go through here and kind of paint a little more dirt in those cracks. Now, all of this, of course, can be done in Substance Designer two ways. Number one, you can mask by the exact same thing. You can mask by a cavity and then, because you bake out a cavity map in Painter, and then you can paint in the cavities on a separate layer. It'll be less destructive. So you'll be able to go in and go, let me adjust the hue of my paint, uh, crack paint, <laughs> essentially what I'm painting here. Uh, so it's very much less destructive. Um, you can kind of do some of that in ZBrush. If you go into your brush settings here and you go down to say alpha and texture, there's poly paint mode. So by default standard, but if you want to say like multiply orange, over this, you can actually paint in a multiply type way or a colorize, kind of like when you're painting in Photoshop, you can change this poly paint mode to multiply light and dark and standard colorize. So we'll keep that the standard. Um, so yeah, when I'm doing creature stuff, I do like to poly paint, but yeah, if I'm doing like wear and tear and paint flaking over another material, I'll just do that in Painter. So anyway, here's this little guy. And if you do watch that series, you know, I can hit BPR and I can turn the floor on and it'll cast a shadow on the floor.